uh, certainly had a day of technical issues, but we are back and sorted and interview. Uh, and I am joined by Haroon from Libraside. Uh, an absolute pleasure to have him with us. Uh, so hello, Haroon. How are you? Hello, sir. How are you doing? Not too bad. Cheers. It's good to finally uh, have you on. I mean, we have been playing Libraside since 2017. Really? I want to say. Or something ridiculously early like that. Yeah, I heard some of the, the first album stuff you were just playing there. So I know. definitely uh, appreciate it, sir. Thank you. It's definitely uh, been a while. Um, so before we actually play your music, um, for our listeners that have possibly never heard any Libraside before, especially not the new stuff, um, how would you explain Libraside in, in kind of a short couple of sentences? Uh, like the name itself and stuff or what what you're making what 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 we're making yeah um sorry i guess i guess i'm not clear the name or the new record the, or the music as a whole what is oh. libraside um well Libra. i guess there's a lot to that uh libraside itself um well if you know side kind of you know uh homicide regicide stuff like that so side is the destruction of um, and Libri is actually uh, books or libraries. Um, of course, in modern terms, that's kind of opened up to, uh, you know, DVDs, CDs. It's kind of, it's the destruction of knowledge in general. And uh, it's sort of bringing awareness to that. Um, not to promote it, but just to, mm -hmm. you know, I, I was, we were just trying to think of kind of a one, a one word name uh, that was kind of romantic, kind of brandable, memorable. Um, so yeah, we, come, we came up with Libraside before that first album and uh it's been serving us well ever since so excellent cool uh and who does libraside libraside sorry now i know how you pronounce it uh consist of uh right presently it is myself um on lead vocals and guitars we have dylan stark on lead guitars and backing vocals that's the shredding you guys might hear on the record um we are also working with uh will will helmus he calls himself sapanaro he's the bass player and henry ellis is our drummer Okay, um, so it's it's been quite a while since we we last heard of you. Um, what have you been up to, and why have you been quite so quite so quiet? I don't feel like we've been quiet, man. I mean, it's been a it's been a long time coming for this second record. Certainly, mm -hmm. we played we played a lot of shows. We made a lot of connections. We opened for a lot of big name acts off of that first record. Um, so so we're thankful for that experience. It certainly feels like it's been a little quiet. It, this, this record's been a long, a long time in the making, and uh, obviously, like the pandemic, kind of slowed things down a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but yeah, we took that opportunity when shows went away and everything. We had all these songs written, and we, you know, we wanted to wanted to kind of put the balls to the wall, le leave no stone unturned, uh, sa you know, save no costs. The way we looked at it for this was, hey, you know, or maybe we should do that with everything. But you know, this could be our last. <laughs> So why not do everything mm -hmm. possible to make it the best it can be? Um, so though we though we hadn't gotten out as as soon as we had, had liked to, we're certainly happy and, mm -hmm. and happy with and proud of the product. So um, but definitely not going to be this long between records again. So that's for sure. That's good to hear. That's good to hear. Well, uh, before we we talk a, a little bit uh, more in depth about uh, how how you came about to to put this record together. Um, we want to play one of your one of your tracks for those that haven't heard you or heard music from uh, you before, uh, sure. and I wanted to start off with "Over Everything." Um, so, as the lyric writer, what does "Over Everything" mean to you? So, "Over Everything" was was kind of perfect for the times. It was a reflection of uh, you know of the pandemic, of the struggles. It was uh, it's very much like literally kind of where the where the title comes from and what it speaks to. It's like getting to the point of frustration with so much you know in your life personally professional i mean it's it's different for everybody but i think that that common thread is that you know you can get to a place where you're just sort of beyond like all these issues all these things causing you stress you're just quite literally over everything like okay that was kind of the vibe going into that um but ironically enough it's it actually it's paired with its sister song everything is easy um so it's kind of both sides of that coin even though everything easy is easy is a little bit sarcastic too and like a little bit like tongue in cheek about it mm -hmm. um, but it was so, sort of like a dichotomy to almost balance each other out so you you have everything is easy right after on the record too which is cool but over everything was was our first single uh coming off of this record so 
that's a that's okay. a good place to start. There we go. Uh, on that note, this is over everything from Libraside. Cool. I'll put us backstage now. Sounds good. You are listening to XRP Radio over everything from Libraside, and I'm still here for, with Haroon from Libraside. Haven't put him off yet, uh, but then again, we haven't got the questions from the chat box yet. Um, I know there's been a few in there already. Um, uh oh. Uh oh. Some of them have, are quite amusing. Are they? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, there may be a couple of passes there, as I. Okay. Gulp. Um, so let's talk Libra side though. Let, let's let's do the good bit before we get to the the worrying bit. Actually, looking at some of these comments. Um, yeah, going to Tez. <laughs> <laughs> um. So how how did you guys? You mentioned uh, before that you spent a lot of time during the um, during the pandemic to kind of create this this record. Was that was that kind of your your full focus musically? Did you kind of straight away from um social media and stuff like that and kind of focus on making this sound good or uh because i didn't see much from you personally but not saying you didn't uh did you uh do what the many did and start doing some of these facebook live streams and stuff like that how did you take it yeah i mean we would love to there was there was a there was a lot of transition happening um both personally and with the band and stuff uh we would we'd have loved to do live streaming and stuff i actually uh uh, my fiance and I moved uh, upstate a little bit outside of the city. We got a big old barn up here. I would have loved, I was actually a thought to like set up a couple cameras, you know, maybe do some shows and stuff. 
Um, just, yeah, just, you know, it didn't happen in that time frame, but I'm sure it will soon. We're, we're still looking to build out kind of a studio and HQ over here. Um, but yeah, we had, you know, we, we had these songs, shows were out the window. So it, it was like, you know, what's the best use of our, of our time otherwise. And, you know, it's a, it's a time consuming process. We also, you know, workshop them a little bit, like re, you know, worked on arrangements and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So we figured we have this little bit of time. We have this opportunity. Uh, let's let's pop in and do it. And um, yeah, so we and we went down. We recorded at this place called Portrait Recording Studios in New Jersey. Um, I worked with uh, our engineer John Ferreira, great engineer. The record the record sounds major label. We we like to say yeah. you know, as independent artists, like you know, we worked our butts off on this. No expense spared. And we actually uh, were able to. We got it mastered by this gentleman named Ted Jensen, who I don't know if anybody's familiar with him. You guys can look him up. He has his he has his full discography online of albums he's mastered um and he's done everything from like every billy joel record to like the eagles hotel california he did green day's american idiot like the list is just endless um so we were really fortunate to be able to work with him too so that's awesome it was a long time coming but like yeah the the kind of the running joke is like we feel like we grew like two records within the span of this record <laughs> there's so okay. much happening and all that yeah so definitely so you yeah. can definitely see a, an increase in um, not just production, not just production quality, but the you know the songwriting process as, as a whole as well. Um, yeah. I don't, through... yeah, I don't know. Sorry, I just wanted to chime in real quick. Okay. What we did do was we started. Uh, we have this little offshoot called Lieberside Studios, which does kind of our more like uh, like viral content and stuff because we were starting to do like more experimental stuff, a little bit different. And people okay. were asking like, "Is Lieberside a band? Is Lieberside this?" this online thing now like what is it so we we're like all right we should probably differentiate the two um so we started Libreside studios which we also have a youtube channel up for and that does kind of all our like more viral stuff because we still are very much into like you know production and video and all that mm -hmm. good stuff and we have all these fun ideas for video concepts and stuff um but we didn't want to confuse our audience so but we also have that Libreside studios arm which is our production arm but also our recording facility um, it's kind of it's kind of in this room right now as a starting point, <laughs> and eventually moving out uh, to the okay. barn. Uh, we do some Reno and electric and all that, but I yeah. like it. Yeah, but, every, everybody's got to start. So I I remember starting when I was sixteen in my bedroom in my parents' house. There you go. Couple of speakers, knocking out rap mixes for my friends. Come on, everyone starts somewhere. And now look at you, man. You got you got the crowd. You got the uh, wall busters in the chat room. How you guys yes. doing? So, so something like that anyway so some people may say i've gone down the wrong path or or a useless path one of the two uh but they, let's they move on they you brother they don't know your life so uh it's true it's true um but we're trying to get to know your life uh more so when, when it comes to the songwriting process um uh you know you say you're the the, the kind of lead uh, as it were but um how does it come from kind of concept to idea to studio yeah um it's it's funny you mentioned concept because well everybody writes differently i feel like uh so dylan actually contributed uh, a good amount on on this record as well because uh, he came in kind of late in the recording process on the last record so he just kind of mainly tracked leads and stuff um but yeah everybody has a different approach i know like dylan typically writes from a guitar perspective so he'll start with like the instrumental or a riff and kind of mm -hmm. build from there me, I'm very like conceptual top-down approach. So yeah, like you said, I'll, I'll have the concept first, um, just kind of something that that resonates with me or has been bothering me or has been on my mind, something I feel like, you know, kind of prevalent about that I want to talk about. Um, so I don't know, it's hard to explain, but like once, once I have kind of an idea of what the concept is, I'll just start kind of, you know, playing around and trying to write music that kind of fits that vibe, you know, energetically. So uh, it's tough to, you know, I don't know where it like really comes from so to speak but you start with the concept on the top level and then you kind of do the music and as the music builds you're working in the lyrics with it to, to work with the concept tie everything together and um and you know i have good enough gear in, in this space here that i can at least like demo the full songs you know even mm -hmm. if it's like program drums and stuff like that but i can track everything like i'm not i'm not a bass player by nature i'm not a drummer by nature but i can pass on the instruments and i understand how they work, like, you know, how to play them, how to program drums. So I can, I can still write a full fledged song in the studio. So I essentially did that 15 times and then, uh, you know, took it to the guys and we workshopped it a little bit in a rehearsal space, you know, 
tightened up some arrangements, added sections, removed sections, changed stuff around mm -hmm. um, to a point where we were all happy and, and, and ready to go with it, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, also you can't, I'm sure, you know, you know, you can't, uh, you can't waste too much time once you're in like a fully professional grade studio. Cause you yeah. know, they're not cheap. And more than that, you don't want to be wasting time. You don't want to go in not knowing your stuff. So we make sure everything's as ready as it possibly can be. And then we got in there and, you know, it still took a freaking year to record, but we got it done. <laughs> <laughs> and the quality's there. So, you know, we're proud of it. it, it, it it's, it's worth it and it's science it, but I wouldn't like to to know your uh, studio, Bill. Let's put it that way. Oh, well, um, yeah, it's okay. I'll, <laughs> I've already come to terms with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, from, from your own opinion, uh, before we get on to the, the, the next track, um, sure. what do you think uh, in, in this age of, uh, you know, digital technology and everyone can record in their bedroom and to, to quite a good standard, what in your personal opinion uh, was the, the, the kind of reason why you decided to take it to the studio? Uh, yeah, just because, um, well, the first the first record, the way we describe it was the first record was largely kind of a local scene record. Um, we were working with, and you know, not to knock anybody, the producers we got to work with were great at the time and everything. Just the, mm -hmm. the record just kind of had more of a, a local feel. Um, so, you know, this was like, this was a long time coming for this next one. And I'm sorry, I lost my train of, uh, train of thought a little bit. Where, <laughs> just talking about... Um what what why you decided to to take this to the studio when you have that kind of at home recording so well yeah i mean there's still a, there's still a difference uh between you know having a couple a couple nice pieces of gear in your own studio versus like fifty thousand dollars worth of outboard mm -hmm. gear and you know a neve mix board and you know top of the line speakers and every kind of amp you can imagine this was a great studio they had a, they had a ton of resources and you know they had they had the great connections. They had Ted Jensen. They had all this, mm -hmm. and it was we wanted the quality to be better. Again, that first record was was kind of for the local scene, for the New York City circuit where we came up, and it did great for what it was. We were just ready for that next level, not just in terms mm -hmm. of quality, but you know, starting to take things you know nationally, semi internationally. Um, so we just wanted we didn't want to have any hesitation or any questions about the quality, you know. So okay. it's, yeah. it's very much a short of you know you being phenomenal and, and being able to do amazing things with like the crappiest gear which would still have its limitations um you know it was the pandemic we were like this this could be our last record ever so why not do Fair everything way. we can to make it as amazing as possible so, i like it yeah. i like it yeah. uh now a, a minute ago we were talking about uh the kind of concept as a whole and uh prior to the track that we were playing you said um, over everything had a, a sister track um so how did how did the sister track kind of come about um was it intended to be kind of a two track concept or did it was it just the tale needed more to be told yeah it's funny they actually the way i had written them originally was they were both like super short songs they were it was kind of like a, it was almost like they were both like more punky um mm -hmm. over everything didn't have the second verse or uh, the second chorus and stuff and everything is easy didn't have the outro it has now um so they were kind of very punky just going into each other and this comes back to when we were uh you know workshop in the songs in the rehearsal space the guys were there they were listening to it like these are both great like these are very strong tracks individually like why don't we flesh them out a little more and make them full-fledged songs like the both of them um so that's kind of how it turned from mm -hmm. like a minute and a half to two minute songs each to like full-fledged you know singles so Okay. The logic okay. behind that. I, I was I was trying to be very smart and go into that track as the next track, and then I realized that we just <laughs> got it. Oh uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> this this like, is why singles I and like I think one other track we've gotten a a, a great response for. So sorry, that's that's okay. my such Well, a... let, let let let's switch this up and uh, let let let's let our guests decide. So out of the ones that you've uploaded, um. Hopefully, it's not the one that we've already played. What's your favorite? My favorite, personally, or the yeah. chat? P personally, your favorite. Oh, that's tough, man. There's so many. We cover a lot of different genres in this, so it really mm -hmm. depends on your mood. Um, last time, which is one of the songs I uploaded, a lot of people seem to resonate with because it's more of a, it's kind of a straight-ahead rock tune that like a lot of people can enjoy. 
Um, but we have everything from, you know, Them Without You is, is our ballad. I love that. I think that came out pretty beautiful. Um, it sounds pretty epic toward like the bridge and the, you know, the final choruses and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I love Acceptable Losses. That's like a death metal song. But then we follow it up with Work Right Now, which is like a hip hop song. So it's tough, man. It's like it's like having to choose between your babies. Like you love there's something <laughs> about each one, you know, so. What a way to put it. Well, I think, uh, as you said, it, the first, the first, I went for the track that you first said just to uh, um, be quick. Uh, but you said last time, so I think we'll play this. And sure. then uh, we'll start taking some of these questions from the chat box. Oh, there is a few. I'm going to have to quick fire some of these because there is quite the, quite the list. Uh, and you may be passing on some of them. Uh, but for now, this is Libra Side with last time. Uh, and hopefully he doesn't run away uh, between in the next three minutes and 38 seconds. Last time there from Libricide, still with Haroon, even though we warned him the listeners' questions are coming up. Let's, go. Um, Let's do it. Now, I, I warn you that there's going to be a section of questions uh, here from one of our own DJs, and I think his um, purpose in life is to try and get me to read out the most embarrassing questions to, to our um, 
our guests to make me look more stupid rather than than you. So <laughs> please be wary of those. Uh, he's utterly professional. Um, let's put it this way. So, um, you know what? I've got five in a row from him straight off. I'm going to quick fire these to you. Uh, so you can have fun and answer. You are allowed to say pass, and I wouldn't blame you uh, for for a lot of these. Can we take uh, the time so I remember uh, what the heck he's asking? So, unless they're unless they're totally nuts. No, oh, they're totally nuts. Don't worry about this. Uh, let's put it this way: the first question is, what happened the last time you were diarrhea drunk? I was what? Di diarrhea drunk. Diarrhea drunk. So, yeah. Is, is it, this may be a new term to you that it means so drunk that you shit yeah. yourself yes that's been a while my man i don't know that might be uh since college days yeah i, I gotta i don't know i gotta pass on that if i if i if you get drunk enough to shit yourself you probably don't remember what happened anyway so i mean you're quite right, you're quite right. <laughs> i'm just um, that was a blackout <laughs> uh don't, don't worry haroon uh the uh, quality of these questions goes downhill, believe it or not. Really? Um, I want to get rid. I'm just going to get these out of the way. Uh, who was you? What? You're such a sick guy. What? Who, who's your favorite fascist dictator? Fascist dictator? Yeah. I don't know enough history about fascists. How do you what? Really? Like how just, do you just pass on that? No, no, nobody answers. Okay, yeah, that no, no, uh, yeah. Not gonna touch that. Um, <laughs> th th this is my fault for saying that I will ask all these questions. Um, your what? Your life depends on choosing publicly. State. Wait a sec. Oh, he, he he was on a fascist thing here. Obviously, your okay. life depends on choosing either publicly stating that you don't think Hitler was bad. Or only eating pineapple on pizza and drinking tea with coconut milk in it. Huh. Well, considering uh, saying Hitler wasn't that bad would probably ruin your entire life, let alone your career. Yeah. And I don't, I, I'm not a fan of pineapple pizza. Sorry if there's anybody in the chat who, uh, who is, but uh, no, you're a good man. I feel like, yeah, you know, come on. Yeah. It was like shit on pizza. Here's a here's a here's a question for you for you back, bud. Would you rather eat <laughs> shit on pizza or admit? That what Hitler did wasn't that bad. <laughs> say it, not admit it. Sorry, wrong. <laughs> Obviously, it was terrible. Admit, yeah, uh, um, yeah. So, what would you uh, do, my friend? I'd like to get an answer to that. And Andrew's the kind of person that would put it on a billboard uh, just for shits and giggles. To be fair, so I think I already know his answer. Okay. Um, this is this is an oldie but a goodie. A little bit more tame. Which celebrity would you like to have stroke your hair as you die? As I die? Yeah. Man, that's I love your reactions to some of these questions. <laughs> like curveballs, dude. What do I even I don't know? Like would Keanu Reeves or Brad Pitt still be alive when I when I die? I don't know. It depends when I pass. Let's but... just let's just say they are. Okay. Or hypothetical. Anybody's anybody's yeah. oh yeah, I mean this this is hypothetical. Yeah. I like mean, it could be that far in the future that we can resurrect Michael Jackson or something, though you probably oh. don't want him to stroke your hair. Uh, eh, maybe not Michael. Um, <laughs> Freddie? Maybe Freddie Mercury? That'd be cool. Okay, yeah. That'd be, all okay. right that. That'd be nice. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Um, we're out of uh, questions from Andrew now. Uh, Mish has asked, oh, what? It doesn't get any better. I'm so sorry for this. <laughs> hey, I was expecting two more uh, freaking degenerate-ass questions, but that's cool. We, no, we've got more. Yeah. They've just been split up. Don't you worry. Uh, this is still a degenerate ass question. What are the dirtiest <laughs> underpants uh, or knickers he puts in that you have worn on tour and how much, much did the others think you were scum and wanted to kick you out the band? Ooh. Well, that's the beauty, I guess, of my position. Semi, you kick me out, the band's kind of over anyway. But uh... <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I mean, the way um, I try not to go more than uh, you know three four weeks with the same undies on. So uh... wow, that was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought I thought you were gonna get get days maximum weeks. No, I mean, uh... oh my god, we're. I mean, look, we're not we're not in our early twenties anymore or any of that shit. So I feel like if we're gonna go on tour, we're gonna do it in a way where we can at least shower properly every <laughs> know, couple days. You know, yeah. so 
I hope so. But no, thankfully it's never been that that gross or terrible. So so Perfect. far, yeah. <laughs> uh, controversial here. Uh, hopefully, all of your band members uh, and colleagues are listening. If you would, f- if you were forced at gunpoint, who would you kick out the band and why? Who? Yeah. Why? That's mean. That's a mean question. At gunpoint. Yeah. No. It's, it's you can't. I'd probably kick myself out, just because. It's the right thing to do. It's yeah, I wouldn't want to do it to the other guys. There's a gun to my head. Well, you know, I'd spare my own life, but I'd be like, fine. If you really want Lieberside to be over that badly, I'll I'll fucking end it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this, I have to admit, is a question that I'm going to possibly ask every single, um, every single person that uh, that that I ever interview from now on, because this is this is actually truly brilliant. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you have one or not, so feel free to, in your mind, uh, change the um, directed person to either your cousin or someone else. But it says, your daughter says she's going on a date with either Donald Trump or all of Nickelback. Which one do you tell her to go for? Oh, man. And uh, fun fact, I actually just had a little girl, so she's uh, she's about eight months old now. <laughs> I mean, we, but, I think we're talking like when she's at a some right, right. Well, well, I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't. You know what though? I'm not gonna lie. I love Nickelback. Sorry, sorry, guys. You might fucking. And that's the end of the interview. It's been a pleasure speaking to you, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hate a band just because people tell you to hate a band. They write good fucking songs. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, like I can appreciate their uh, their structure, their song structure, their hustle. Like there's a lot to admire. And, and you know what? Chad Kroger like plays dumb, but that he's a very smart man. Let me let me freaking tell you, dude. He, that's all an act. So I'd be cool. I don't know. I'd be like, yo, can I come on the date with you? I'd get to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> like, sweet. Good for you. I mean, he's probably 60 years old by now, but whatever. That's cool. Oh yeah, I mean, this is a mad hypothetical world of XRP question boxes. Yeah, these are these are a little nuts, guys. I'll I'll give you I'll give you credit for that. Oh my god, Ryan! Ryan is um, a promoter that I've started working with recently, and I held him in high regard until he comes with this. He even started it with, "Okay, here it goes." Oh lord. Would you rather take a dairy fart blown directly up the nostril or listen to three Justin Bieber songs? Oh, man, your your fans are really going to hate me, dude. There's some good Justin Bieber songs, man. Wait, 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 right. Come on. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Stretch those boundaries a little bit. You know, open up. I I forget the name of the – actually, I forget the name of the one Justin Bieber song I like, but it is it was super catchy. I'm not going to lie. I'm sure this image of – Hearing not... Justin Bieber and Nickelback juxtaposed in your mouth. I mean, what would you pick? That, I, 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 to, to be fair, yeah. Tell me you'd pick the diarrhea. The diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd, I would personally. Tasty. No, I, I, I throw up at the sight of disgusting things. Right, you just um, ass out and put headphones on or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll just think about it, and then I'll pass out, and then people could do whatever they want. It, within reason um oh ouch <laughs> this is an ouchy one this is oh, how what? you suddenly lose a lot of friends uh you guys i, are I would set me up yeah, for I, here here I, I, I again wouldn't blame you if you didn't answer this question um what u.s state would you happily you put happily here see so sink into the ocean and never come back oh bro that's easy come on florida <laughs> no questions asked. They already call America the Florida of the world. So yeah, let's. <laughs> I was gonna say like I was unsure because you have some people that really love Florida. So it was either gonna be oh I can't answer that question or Florida. Have you heard of Florida man? I have. I have. There, there are people that that I know from the area that are like yeah Florida oh, sure. and well, like yeah we'll, we'll you we'll need to. Now. So they can leave. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. If you lost your mind, I mean, you're starting this question off, Mish, with Assuming if you lost you your mind. Already. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, 
and you knew you could get away with it, would you kill Coldplay and Mumford or and Sons? Oh, maybe Mumford. Again, I like Coldplay. I'm sorry, <sighs> yeah. dude. You hear all these influences. Well, not eh, not Bieber, but <laughs> definitely not any overtly <laughs> poppy stuff. Yeah, I no. <laughs> I hate to say it, I, there are little bits. Uh, um... oh, these get worse. Really? Uh, do you have a dog? I do not. Okay. Not yet. Well, the answer to that one's no, luckily. Not um, okay. It, have, have you, has your dog ever watched you have sex? Which I'm presuming, as Craig's asked it, his dog has, which is a mental image I didn't want. More and more um, dogs do. My cat has, and he just, you know acts like nothing's happening while staring. So that's always fun. <laughs> Another mental image yeah, I did. Another room, watch. man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, th this is a great question, actually. Actually, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that one to the end. There's a good question coming up at the end. All right. Um, you. Have you ever had fish and chips? What one? But added, or are you vegetarian? As in, like. Okay. Have you um, ever had fish uh, and chips? Yeah, yeah, yeah. May, um, I think I had fish and chips when I was in the UK, when I was in uh, in London. You can't. Oh, if you've been here, you have to. I have. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Are you kidding? No freaking great. I love it, man. For sure. I'm not a fan, to be honest. I'm the most un-British guy you'll ever meet. I don't like tea. I don't like scones. I don't like the monarchy. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like about British culture? Um, I'm at the pub. Are nice. The, the, the pub's good. Pub's good. He says um, nothing. He says you hate it all, but <laughs> I, I hate most of it. No, the weird, the weirdest thing that I like about the UK, uh, which is less so these days than it was when I was younger. But how multicultural, how not UK you, the UK is. Very multicultural over here. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that my favorite thing about the UK is the fact that it's very much not the UK in most places outside kind of London and the rural very villages. A little New York um, working in that sense. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I've never been, so I'm just guessing nothing really. Come by sometime, man. I'll uh, I'll add you to the itinerary if we're ever back over the across the pond again. Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah, you've you always. Are. I'm up in Scotland now, but you're always welcome. Oh yeah, sweet. Okay, totally. Um, right. Uh, <laughs> aside from organizing our own lives, yeah. Um, <laughs> where were we? <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, don't you think that I should shake up my color scheme a little? Shake up your color scheme? In what sense? Yeah, I, I, I'm black and yellow. Everything is black and yellow, black and yellow. Chair, oh, black well, and yellow. I mean, I'm down with the black and yellow. But if you want to go nasty. Well, I mean, everybody's got to have their theme colors. I feel like even, well, we're trying to, but maybe for the next logo and stuff. But why? It's consistent. It's identifiable. I mean, I don't know what else you'd change it to. You got the shirt right there. That, I'm sure that took some work. So. But the, 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 this is the thing I was thinking about. We were thinking about doing a rebrand recently, and then we were like, "What the fuck are we going to do with the merch?" <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can keep the same colors, maybe change the design. I don't, I don't see anything wrong. I think it's, I think it's cool, identifiable. Good, good man. See, I've been defended you know? by uh, a, a guest, so we're okay. <laughs> um, so, hint, hint. And wait, what? Oh, right. Uh, this was a question that was added to another question. Uh, do, did you put lemon and vinegar on your fish and chips? Uh, I did lemon. Not. I didn't know. Was lemon and vinegar a thing? I don't know. Yeah, lemon and vinegar. I, was, I don't really. I think I just got lemons with it, so I did that. But yeah, that was really good. I feel I like it's really good. I'm a big vinegar uh, myself. Vin yeah. Vinegar's good. Nice. Um, I'll have to remember that for next time. So weird, right? We've we've got two more left, uh, and the special question. Uh, I don't, I'm going to ask it because I have to. What's your skincare routine? Do you see this this face on this freaking? You think I have a skincare routine, guys? Come on. Sweet. Answer. <laughs> uh, and lastly, so, no, somewhat no, important. Skincare routine. Sorry, what was that? Somewhat important. Craig asks, uh, Pringles or chips in a bag? Oh. Only because there's more varieties of chips in a bag than Pringles. But I, I like them both, man. Come on. I like that answer. I like that answer. And finally. I'm in a place for everything. Finally, that great question before we uh, we play another track. Uh, that great question was, I love this. What's the question you wish we'd asked? Wish we'd asked? Oh, my God. 
Nobody asked that question. I never thought about that. <laughs> I don't. I. I. I don't have. That's. I don't have an answer for that one. Actually, that's a really good one. I don't know. Perfect. Yeah. There's well, maybe a lot, we'll know. A lot of interesting and diverse ones in that. So I couldn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, firstly, Haroon, thank you so much for actually dealing with all of that. Um, I, that I just was, was in the chat myself so I could like interact with you crazy bastards. That that was possibly <laughs> the worst, <laughs> the worst set of questions that we've had in a good long while. <laughs> yeah, Craig goes, yep, I'm kicking myself out of my band. Right move, Craig. <laughs> That's the right move. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Uh, right here we go. Um, let's go for another. Uh, 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 I'm losing my. I've, I've been speaking for too long now. I'm losing the ability to speak. Uh, so we best get some of your music on. Uh, let's get another track on. Um, silence. I always get worried when a track's called Silence, just in case <laughs> someone's having me on. Uh, but tell us a little bit about it. Uh, sure. So yeah, Silence was. I think we were talking a little bit about it too, funnily enough. Silence, Silence is an interesting one. Um, it was originally actually, the working title was Silent Culture. Um, it's all about kind of the life and times that we live in. Uh, it's about like the, the protagonist in the song. Um, he's dealing with like kind of an increasingly invasive uh, government entity, so to speak. Uh, you know, as, as the internet grows, as everybody's online, you know, we have the NSA here in, uh, in America and stuff. And it's like, it's pretty much like uh, everything you kind of say and do online or whatever is, you know, not being tracked, I guess, necessarily in real time, but there's always kind of a footprint for it. So this is maybe whether you could say it's current, hypo, you know, hypothetical, a couple years down the line. Um, it's about a guy or a society um, coming up in like increasingly kind of author authoritarian times. Um, mm -hmm. And so like the, the concept behind it was in order to in order to stay off the map and not have your like paper trail be identifiable or followed or whatever, you'd essentially have to go totally silent, like not even use the internet, not even, you know, all this stuff. Yeah. So it's all, it's, it's actually all about intrusive surveillance and um, you know, this, this trade-off that we have going on between uh, like ease and comfort and like privacy and violations of that and stuff. So it's very much about that stuff. What we're Where do you stand on that before we play it? Uh, I mean, I, I, I fucking hate the surveillance. I get it's, it's crazy. Be, you know, we let, we, we let it in. So it's almost like we can't, how do you, how do you talk shit on a system that you're a part of? It's like, you know, it's like Facebook. They say like, if, if something's free, you're, you're, you're most likely the product, which mm -hmm. actually is the case. You know, they sell your data, your user information, all that. Um, so yeah, I very much hate that ass. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a pretty private person. Otherwise, you know, I know you get to choose what you want to share and what not to. But like, yeah, it's I don't know. Sometimes it's baffling to me the amount of uh, kind of personal information and stuff people are willing to give up just for even like the sake of ease. You know, it's like it's weird. It can go both ways. It's kind of a double edged sword. And I know there's all kind of spectrum like on the spectrum of it. But my, my only thought, because I, I, I agree somewhat, but like uh, there's quite often where I'm sitting there and like scrolling Facebook and an ad will pop up. That, Something that you talked is, about with a friend two days yeah. ago is now being served to you as an ad. Yeah, now, it's a little bit freaking. But my point is, like, I actually quite want that thing in that advert there. So, <laughs> and I'd rather have, I'd rather have that advertised to me than like, you know, a pink frilly tutu skirt or you know something like that. In fact, I would quite like a pink frilly. No, um, but <laughs> wouldn't you rather uh, go to Amazon though and buy it without knowing some guys? Uh... Listen to what you're talking about and serving about you. You know, I don't know. You know, to each their own. <laughs> of varying degrees of. I'm an, uh, my, my, I, I guess for me, it's like what what harm is it? I mean, as long as I'm not doing anything wrong, what harm is it that someone like? Right, there's yeah. some things that I'm like, if someone's listening to me, I'm going to be like, ha, you have to listen to this. That <laughs> is. <laughs> you yeah. don't want to hear what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I don't think you want other people to hear what you're doing on, on some of those things, you know? So, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's, true. It's, it's tough. It's, uh, you know, it can snowball very quickly. And, you know, we're seeing it in these times already. So just kind of a warning, but very. Oh, is he frozen or I frozen? Oh, sorry. All good? We had a little glitch there. No worries. Okay. 
Um, so um, yeah, we, we were going to do a music video. It fell through. Um, but it's it's very much a cinematic experience kind of on its own. You put that shit in the headphones, smoke a little bud, and uh, it'll take you places. But, yeah, that's what that's about. I love it. Uh, just uh, for XRP's reasoning, don't do not do a drug, anyone. It's bad. Oh, drug. no, don't do that. Yeah. Not at all. Here we go. This is Silence from Libraside. Oh my days. <laughs> that was awesome. Depressing enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was That's a trip, man. Yeah, that whole that whole yeah. solo at the end. It was meant to sound like planes flying overhead with the bomb dropping at the end. Mm. Fucking I love that. That, that was a that's great. Oh <laughs> sorry. Um <sighs> You've, you've got me off track now. That was seriously good. Got proper yeah, like Mars. It's been a minute since yeah. I listened to some of these. <laughs> it's got got that Mars Volta vibe uh, for sure. Sick. I don't know if you've that. ever. Yeah, it's definitely. That's up my street. Uh... Cool. Sorry, this this is a problem with me doing blind reactions to your tracks whilst I'm uh, doing wow. an interview with you. Occasionally, That's the best you get a track. Yeah. Honest feedback. <laughs> That's great. Um, That's cool. 
Right then, we've got one last track from you, which we'll get up to uh, shortly. Uh, but now's that, that bit of time where we ask you, so what's next for Libricide? Oh, yeah, man. Um, well, it's crazy. Well, yeah, most recently, actually, I just I wanted to share it. Uh, it was pretty awesome. We, we did this festival down in Atlantic City with uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Hooba Stank, Puddle of Mud, oh, wow. John Five, Chevelle. It was that was sick. Um, so, yeah, dude, just just, you know, this record is still it's still fairly young. It came out in April. Um, so we're still doing a lot of promotion for that. Um, we actually have a date. We're playing the Chance Theater this Friday night, actually, up in uh, in Poughkeepsie, New York. Um, we have some other dates coming around the country, uh, around the country and stuff, around the East Coast mostly. Um, but yeah, just a lot more promo for this record. Um, shooting some music videos and stuff like that. A lot more Libreside Studios stuff. And honestly, I'm I'm already like excited and ready and kind of started writing for for the next record too because I definitely don't want it to be you know kind of as long as a gap between the two. Um, mm -hmm. And this just kind of woke something up in us. So we're just we're just hauling ass, man, down the road just doing all those things we have to do as an independent act. And ironically enough, also submitting to lab like labels and additional radio mm -hmm. and all this stuff. Just, you know, just trying to do the record, the justice it deserves, so to speak. So. Excellent. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. Uh, now, for, for way in the future, what, what is your, I mean, apart from just to be like a massive band, um, what, what, what would be the point where you would be kind of, uh, it's hard to explain this question, happy with your musical career? Is there a certain stage that you want to perform, which will be like, this is it, or a certain show, or is it a number one on iTunes? What What is your kind of, this is where it is kind of moment for you? I mean, these are all, these are all quote unquote, uh, achievements you want to unlock, you know what I mean? Achievement unlocked, as they say, but, uh, you know, oh, it's so... It's so crazy seeing, you know, all the festivals come back after the pandemic, like the Blue Rig mm -hmm. and uh, Rocklahoma. And I I think our music fits very well. I mean, we're not to say that we're forcing it or whatever. I mean, we're genuinely in influenced by all these mainstream artists. So uh, I guess kind of the full circle dream in that sense would be able to to work with a lot of these people, share the stage, mm -hmm. share a stage with it. Not just that, you know, I'd love to work with some more of these like great producers, maybe other musicians, just kind of keep expanding the brand and it's like uh i don't know you know a lot of people are like this is the moment when i when i made it you know i got to open for uh pantera or some shit you know what i mean mm -hmm. and you think that's the moment and it may, may may very well be up until i remember when playing the chance theater was a dream of ours many years ago and it, it seemed impossible now we're like regulars there so okay. um i mean it's like it's tough but yeah i'd certainly love i'd certainly love a charting single that that would be that would be amazing for us um, and, but you know, it's not even about, it's not about us, so to speak. We just want to create music that, that inspires people that, that gets them hyped. And, um, I just, yeah, I would, I want to work with, you know, the best people are in our industry. So it's, it's tough to gauge what success is, but if we, if we could get to that level, I mean, even that's, even that's plenty to do. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm already super thankful for what we've gotten to be a part of so far, but. Yeah, that doesn't mean you can't have uh, you know more aspirations for the future. So that's it. That's it. Um, with the the final hurrah, uh, we ask you a few simple questions. So, uh, where's the best place to find you and speak to you on a social media platform? Kind of side. Sure, uh, we have Libreside.com. That's our homepage with all the all the info and all the good stuff. But yeah, you can find us on you know Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. We're on TikTok now, building that up. Um, but yeah, I mean, any of those plat, it's it's really we try to be present everywhere as much as possible because obviously everybody has their different platform preference. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it's really whatever works for you guys. But you can find us, you know, throughout. So just just you know, search for Libraside and uh, and we'll be there. And we're always open to to hanging out and talking. And it doesn't have to be about us or anything. Like we could just talk music and all that good stuff. And Hopefully I'm Very inspired cool. by you, Tiz. So maybe we'll we'll do some live streams and stuff in the near future too. So that'd be cool. That'd be fun. That'd be cool, definitely. Yeah. Um, and uh, where can we find the the music that we've heard and other music? We're on all the all the streaming platforms too. We're on, you know Spotify, iTunes. We're on Bandcamp as well. Um, and we also have you know we have our own links and like we have a link tree on Libreside.com with all with you know all the platform Amazon Music everything. So literally wherever you you search you'll find us we made, we made sure to make ourselves available on as many platforms as possible so love it 
That's the right way. And of course, here on XRP Radio. Of course. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Come on. It's the right thing to do. Um, right, before we play your last track, um, I, I give this to all of the artists that come in. So you have 60 seconds from when I say now to have your soapbox say whatever you want. Thank you to the fans. Hello, mom. Uh, down with um, democracy. I don't know. Whatever you want. You've got 60 seconds starting from now. Guys, thank you so much for coming and hanging out and even being a part of this. Uh, uh, thanks to Tiz for, for having us. It's it's a pleasure. It's an honor. We love you guys. Uh, we do it for the same reason you listen to it, and I'm, I'm still a listener myself. I just We love great music. We love to create. We're artists, as I'm sure some of you are. Keep doing your thing, man. You know, the, the world can be rough sometimes. Um, don't let the divisiveness or the media or any of the bullshit fool, fool you. We're still all human beings at the end of the day. We are brothers and sisters of the same human race. Love one another. Kick some ass. Follow your fucking dreams. And, you know, don't take shit from anyone, man. Live your, live your life as you see fit. You deserve it. And that was perfect. Did you rehearse that? Caught me off guard. <laughs> um, right. Uh, and last but not least, um, I'd like to see you off. Uh, could you... Uh, Introduce your last track and say goodbye to our listeners. Sure. Uh, the last song is Them Without You. It is our only power ballad on the album, actually. Um, and it's very much about the experiences you go through in your life and getting to a point where you realize that maybe you've outgrown some of the current situations and that there's nothing wrong with that. And, you know, growth is natural. And, um, don't hang around longer than you're supposed to, especially if you deserve better and all that. But with that being said, I appreciate you. Thank you, Tiz. Thank you, XRP. And thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, it was fun. It was fun talking the questions and all that stuff. And uh, feel free, you know, if you want to, you can add me on Facebook and stuff and all that too. If you want to talk personally, I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a stranger in any way or, you know, hard to talk to. So love you guys. Okay. And thank you. Appreciate I can answer. say he is quite nice. Uh, Arun, it's been great to have you on, uh, and it's been great to have Libraside back in our uh, ear sight, shall we say, uh, after a little pleasure's, hiatus. Pleasure's all ours, brother. Thank you for having us. Excellent. Uh, so, uh, just because uh, the man who came up with all the horrible questions asked, kind of somewhat asked me to say this, without further ado, there you go, this is them without you. Libra Said, Haroon, it's been a pleasure. Nice. See you guys. Love y'all.
Never side here on XRP Radio. Uh, then without you, it's great to have Varun uh, with us. Uh, and I can bring ALC back in now. Uh, I just didn't want to keep knocking her off and disappearing her. I can't unmute you because you've chose to mute yourself, apparently. Yeah, sorry. I'm there kidding. she is. I didn't know we because were, we're still alive on Facebook. We are. Well, we'll say goodbye to Facebook. Uh, sorry, bye-bye, Facebook. It's been bye a pleasure. Facebook. Um, but yeah, it was great time.